Hello, I'm Sasha Chua, and welcome to another episode of Emacs Live. Today, we're going to be talking to Yanis Zanos, who is uh, going to show us all sorts of cool things involving Emacs, org mode, music, and other things you might discover from his configuration and from his story. Yanis, hello. Thanks for joining hello. us. Uh, yep. So, tell us a little bit about who you are, in ter you know, outside Emacs. You know, what's what's your life like? <laughs> Yeah, well, I teach uh, interactive arts, mainly music, computer music, here in Corfu, which is uh, an island um, at the northwestern corner of Greece, uh, at the Department of uh, Audiovisual Arts, Audio and Visual Arts. And yeah. um, I do Super Collider a lot, sometimes less, <laughs> sometimes more. <laughs> And I teach it. And uh, besides that, I also dabble in other sorts of software like uh, frameworks processing. Uh, of late, Chuck, I like a lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I share it with the students, and uh, that's what I do. Okay, you go ahead and tell us a little bit more about whether you've gotten your students successfully using Emacs as well. But yeah, uh, is... no. <laughs> <laughs> no, not even after you show them this all the cool stuff that you can do. But uh, it's changing slowly. Mm. Okay, so you, you, when you reached out to me over LinkedIn, you mentioned that you you, you started with micro Emacs. That's tell right. us a little bit more about how you got into Emacs in the first place, and and what that's been like for you through the years. Well, that was back in uh, eighty five, eighty five, I think, beginning of eighty five, and uh, I was just beginning my PhD. And uh, together with a couple of other friends uh, in Germany, in Hamburg, German people, and one of them was more of a computer geek, and he said, well, there's this cool thing out called Atari, and it's more accessible than a Mac, which is just about. And uh, so we, we got ourselves, and uh, very soon, Mac or Emacs was out on it, and I was happy, very happy to have it as, a, as an editor. And I, I started doing uh, macro programming on macro, micro emacs straight away. Yeah. Wow. And besides that, there was another guy, Uwe Seifert, who's now doing musicology in, uh, in Köln, uh, who was into Lisp, like me. So we got some Lisp and Scheme interpreters, whatever it was, and uh, started practicing on that. Just one megabyte of RAM and one megabyte, you know, floppy disks, and you can do all sorts of magic with that. It's a really old school, you know. Yeah, yeah. You can do a lot with that. Wow. I also got an APL interpreter, and I programmed a whole system for transcribing, uh, notating, printing, and analyzing music on this little thing. Now thinking back, <laughs> with APL of all languages. I just don't know how I did that because it wasn't even the topic of my PhD thesis, but I used it for the PhD thesis. So you've been all, my, all my examples were printed on it, as many examples, hundreds of pages. Huh. Yeah. So you're yeah. no stranger to this, you know, making tools for yourself and, and especially using. Oh, yeah, I think I like it very much. Yeah. 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 What I do. Yeah. But you mentioned you had uh, wandered away from Emacs for a while. Tell us a little bit, you know, how, how did that work out? Or do you always um, use Emacs for that? Or? Well, um, for the next, for my next studies, I was I had the luck to work on a Symbolics list machine yeah. for three years, and I was using Zmax, and that was, you know, way cool. That's, oh, okay. It's true that the myth that this is the maybe the most advanced machine ever built. <laughs> <laughs> From one perspective, it's, it's true, I think. It's a very strange thing to experience. And uh, at the same time, we have the Apollo Unix workstations and things like that. And I mm -hmm. programmed on that and, and used it. And uh, I played also those very early pre-web uh, online games with programming. <laughs> and I mentioned it because it influenced me a lot. There was Star Trek. Ah. There was Star Trek, and some undergrad university students had installed it somewhere in the in the East United States. <laughs> I was sitting in the western part of the uh, the Pacific there, and um, 
logging in and playing that. It was a very interesting experience because uh, it had no graphical interface, but with the text you could program your own bots inside the game. Mm. And that probably was a, a major experience for me because it, I got the idea that you can program bots to do music. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Now, I've been thinking about programming languages and music for, for a while before that even, but that was the first time to see it actually happen. A, a, a game like music with other people all together and you program your own tools and oh. you let them like little machines, like bots, and they make music. And um, I think it really set my frame of mind, that experience. How did well, you then, uh, with we also had a Mac there. Uh, mm -hmm. one of the more the bigger ones in the lab and I was using it exclusively and and uh, after that I went away and I, we only had Macs and mm -hmm. there was no Emacs on these not not any good Emacs so I was away for 10 years or so or 15 years <laughs> that's a long time <laughs> until my colleague Aris uh, told me as I said you know 2007 there's this cool thing org mode out now and uh, and that was it. It was mm -hmm. it was a reason for coming back. Wow! And you're yeah. going to be showing us some of the the cool things you're doing with organ music. But I just wanted to ask: um, when you started uh, thinking about bots that make music, did you already start coding that, or is that something that you have have been exploring more recently with uh, with org? No, that was uh, that was already part of that thesis I was writing at the moment. Oh, that okay. 90, 93. Very cool. early. But it took a while to yeah. <laughs> mature. <laughs> yeah. All right, so that's how you got into Emacs. And you, you started a long time ago with, with Micro Emacs, and then you just kept going with it. Unfort you know, unfortunately, it wasn't really available on the Mac, but eventually you found the org mode and, yeah. and better e uh, Emacs on, on the Mac, and, and yeah. here we are. Yeah. OS X being Unix, which is good, you know. Yeah. 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 Good. I want to jump into that lovely demo that you started showing me the other day. Do you want to share your screen and, and show us the cool stuff oh. you were working on? Uh, here we are. Uh, so this is what um, Super Collider uh, looks like. Uh, let me uh, let me jump in here. By the way, if people have questions, you can use the Q and A uh, link that you saw on the screen when you started watching the video to ask questions. You can also ask in the Emacs chat channels, Emacs dash chat on IRC. So uh, all right, okay, take it away, Yanis. Okay. So normally uh, what one does to make a sound is something like um, A equals uh, sine os, for example, AR. It's got autocomplete, as you see. Uh, you write down the frequency and the phase and the amplitude and the play. And that's already a shortcut in a way. Mm -hmm. Considering the the old style uh, super collider, and you get a sound, and then you go a dot free, and you can free the sound, or you can say you can start it again. It's got go there, make a sound again, and you can say a maybe release. There's no alternative um, alternative syntax. Maybe five seconds, huh. and now you. You got a five second release. So this is the, the starting situation. This and I was interested in improving on it. Instead of having to write it here and uh, access it later like this, I can use this which is called the Chuck operator and uh, which comes from the Chuck the Chuck program language programmed by, by Ge Wang who is now in Stanford and he did it while he was in Princeton. And uh, it's already been taken up by other people like um, uh, in Super Collider. Uh, but I found it quite interesting. So the cool thing about it is that you can go like something like this and stop it. You don't oh. need to 
uh, yeah, in Superpolar and all. Uh, and uh, uh, maybe um, uh, a different one. Yeah. So I start two of them. I, I, can stop the, I can stop the last one that was chopped, while the other one will continue. So, and then I can stop it by going. Um, like this. Okay, and one can go even shorter, like with this one, and use a, a, short, a special shortcut. Uh, one doesn't even have to write anything mm -hmm. uh, here and uh, <laughs> then one can play um, okay. oh, I see because it's randomized yeah. yeah this is what I wrote here yeah yeah uh, and then we'll move through all the um, through different snippets in the document, which is not given the standard uh, super collider ID. Usually in the standard super collider ID, you have to wrap your code in parentheses like here. Yeah. And then uh, you have to go there with your mouse and click and type a special command and then you can execute the whole code. But with mm -hmm. this piece here, you can uh, actually um, execute it once. Now this is going to be a little bit dramatic, so... <laughs> okay. <laughs> you get to play some bells, ten bells together. And then you go to the next one. And something even more disturbing than that. Wow. Okay, and then this one too, I guess. I'm there. Yeah. Um, now this is something that I did uh, almost exactly one month ago while I was still developing this and trying to to, win, to do all the other ideas. And oh. maybe yeah, this is just a uh, hors d'oeuvre kind of part of it, not even the main meal. So yeah. the main part is the super collider uh, org mode integration. <laughs> So you, you said you started working on this, what, a month ago? <laughs> I started in, in late, late January. Okay. But this is the third major iteration. The first one was in 2003 and lasted on and off until 2006. And then there was another in the, mid in the midways around 2008, 2010. And this is the third major iteration. So all the ideas and the experience has uh, accumulated. Mm -hmm. I see. And, yeah, I, I didn't even intend this to happen. Uh, I was just so inspired by Chuck, which I like very much and I respect a lot, uh, that I started to see the limits of both pieces of software, Super Collider and Chuck. And uh, this, without noticing it, gave me the idea to try a, a few things and see how far I could go. And uh, that's how it came about. Uh. And actually, yeah. use Emacs because. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, you can't do all of this without Emacs and org mode. Yeah. 
Uh, no way. No way you can program all these shortcuts and get, especially get the snippets, get uh, navigate through different parts of code. Yeah. All that. Okay, so show us that part. Show yeah. us the... um, so let's see, what are we going to do? Um, which may be this one. Um, here we are. So one can play uh, either the headline or the code. Here's the code, and here's the headline. Um, to play the headline, you just write an exclamation mark. So, um, this is going to be a short, first, fast walkthrough. Uh, and it's not working. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> As it always happens, you know, devils. Yeah. Interesting. Let me recompile. Okay. Oh, here we are. Next one. Next one. A bit more interesting. Yeah. Now I can play a little piece like this. And then I can open a, a user interface on it. Yeah. And uh, and I can even set the fade out time. So at this point, it should be around uh, 50, 50 per second, so it's very fast. But if I type, oh, wait, I'll probably get a five that second window. Sorry, is there another window that you have open that we, we don't see? No, this is just one. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I'm, I'm typing five on the window itself. Oh. The window uh, responds like so. Uh, so I've got a nine minute, nine second fade out, for example. And uh, it goes on. I get a knob so I can control. It's going to get more interesting when I have more controls. It's, uh, sorry, is that knob in Snippet Demo 01 org, or is there somewhere else? It's, this is no, this is not Emacs. This is oh, okay. Okay. Like user interface. Okay, okay, I see, I see. All right, okay. Uh, yeah. Or I can make it yeah. faster. And uh, more controls also appear automatically. So the next thing is to work with patterns, which are uh, sometimes difficult. They're considered sometimes a bit complicated. Mm -hmm. uh, to make it easier to um, uh, replace parts of patterns inside patterns and also to work seamlessly between sense and patterns, mm -hmm. which is something that was already achieved about almost 10 years ago by a uh, major part of a uh, library that's a major part of Collider, mm -hmm. programmed by, by Julian Rohuber. Uh, it's called JITLIP, just in time lib. Um, uh, and I've been thinking for a while of alternative approaches to this. So it took me it took me about three years on and off, not all the time, to find the right approach for that. I, in fact, I've been thinking even longer before that of how to achieve similar stuff. And I think this time I have I have the right path. I found the right path. So. Uh, let's uh, listen to a pattern. Yeah. Um, so, uh, again. And the 
next one. Make it a little faster and make it louder. And I can control the instrument and the duration independently. Here is the duration. So it's one tenth of a second. Or I can change the pattern just playing a single tone or two tones or four tones. Then I can move to the next one, which is a bit oriental. It would be interesting to try out the, the fade feature. Um, say five seconds of fade time. Oops. Oh yeah, because I'm controlling a single a single parameter, I yeah. don't have fade. But I get a fade and then I get to the next pattern, which is this one. Through it, and org lets you label the patterns uh, to make it yeah. more meaningful, I guess. Yes. Um, um, and you mentioned you swoop to jump around as well. You didn't show us that, yes. but how yeah. do you use that? Um, 
Swoop is just the easiest one-stop way to go through a file. Uh, but it's not the only one I use. I use a lot, uh, quite a few others. Um, so you just type what you want to find. Uh, here's test on. And it's interesting if you want to go, uh, if you want to work with code files, mm -hmm. which I can also show the other tools, which I guess many people are using. Um, for example, uh, either open latest file, um, or we are in org mode anyway, so this is not going to work, um, or use uh, a project file. And I can go um, pattern synth. So I'm here in code, and uh, I can swoop through it. So that's the way I, that's what I do several times a minute when I want to find the next, like, um, uh, the next um, method that I remember. Mm -hmm. Or something like, um, and here we are. Is there a new? There is no new pattern since, but yeah, that's an exception. Uh, now I can use the open later, uh, open late files, so I can go um, uh, something like this, open the recent file, and um, choose another one. Um, um, three. There we are, and I'm says three. And here I will probably find a new. Here we are. Yeah. So it's it's like an an interactive occur. <laughs> yeah, it is it is occur. Yeah, uh, it's a it's a Japanese guy. Uh, I don't remember his name. Uh, it's an additional uh, addition on on swoop on uh, Helm. Yeah. And there is. Of course, there is a classic occur. Um, but this, but, but uh, swoop is much faster because you can see it right it away. Much faster. Uh, I prefer it. Yeah. So, and uh, if you noticed, I also use the vertical IDO mode. Yes. Which is I, I discovered very very recently, and I think it's better. <laughs> it's better than the horizontal one. Yeah, I learned about it through. I think it was Bastian. So. I, uh, Emacs chat also, or one of those. But yeah, um, there are all sorts of interesting conveniences in Emacs packages that it's hard to come across because there's so many packages now. Actually, yeah. would you mind taking us through some of your configuration file and sharing any uh, useful tips that you've got? Yeah, it's also on GitHub on the same place, in the yeah. same place where um, that is, uh, where DynaC is. And uh, I use bookmarks for that. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, Yanni is my configuration file. And uh, then I use also projectile. Yeah. So, which I just use. So, right, right now I'm automatically in that project, so I can go find my, a, my what's it called, init or startup init? Yes, init. And this is the the mother of all. <laughs> oh, yeah. So it, this is file name directory of my of this file itself. And this is loaded by Prelude automatically anyway, and it looks for my custom org file under my name, my user. Yeah. And then I get to the username file, and this is it. And. Uh, well, this is really, this is really butts off going off, uh, off uh, with this guru mode. I don't know who uses this guru mode. I think <laughs> That's the one that forces you to use control F and control B or things like yeah. that, right? It doesn't work. It does. It certainly doesn't work with uh, with org mode because you need it to move through hierarchies all the time. <laughs> things like that. Yeah. They only work with uh, the cursor keys, so it doesn't. Doesn't work. So I took it off, and then uh, visible bell instead of beep, like yeah, yeah. Uh, 
you know. Yeah. And then blink the cursor. And that I don't use my color theme. When you when you have disabled as a tag there, does, does it automatically un you know a skip tangling it or do you also add that? Yeah. Um. No. No. No, okay. no. 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 I just wrote it. No. 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 That disabled. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So so the disabled no, doesn't I, have anything. I, in I instead of writing list, I write e list and that's it. I see. That's <laughs> a way to debug actually, and uh, for a while I was. In the beginning, I didn't look like it was more pretty. I was so, so used to writing pretty in files that using org mode didn't. I was a bit suspicious about using it, trying to be a bit competitive. <laughs> and after a while, I, after a year or so, or no, less, you know, about several months of using org babel for init file, I still had my, uh, my, uh, my doubts, but then something happened which consolidated it, and that was something strange broke inside the init file, and I could use something like a tangle buffer, I think it's called, org tangle buffer or something like that, yeah. to uh, recompile it until I found the very block that was wrong. And it actually stops. It it goes with a cursor at the place where the block fails, and this you don't get when you compile a buffer. Huh. So I think I've got something over 50 little blocks here, 60, 70 blocks. It's quite <laughs> a long file, and um, it would have been two hours instead of 15 minutes if I didn't do it in uh, org mode, Babel. Huh, so that really experience cool. absolutely convinced me that this is the way to go. Because mm. I, 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 I could go through um, and it would stop exactly where uh, it had the problem at, oh. at each moment. So, yeah, there's no question. Or Babel is the way to go. That's especially cool. for init files, yeah. Yeah, I, I I switched over because I love the way that you could you could organize your init file by by in, into hierarchy, because I had problems before where I would write a snippet and I would go to put it in my config file and I re would realize it's actually already there, because <laughs> yeah. I completely forgot about the code. But because it's in an outline, I know where things. Oh, are. yeah, yeah. It's not just uh, the outline. Definitely is a virtue, but you could do it more uh, in a more um, uh, uh, if you are very uh, well disciplined as a coder, you could write a very beautiful Emacs Lisp init file too. You know. Besides, there are a couple of those uh, inverted org users inside of Emacs. I don't remember the names now. Uh, they're quite, but you're probably aware of them. There are some ways to use. A reduced version of org mode, of organi or organizer mode, or some mixture thereof inside yeah. your Emacs list. And then for a while I said, why not go there? But um, I think besides the organization, it's the debugging that's yeah. absolutely the killer argument for okay. using org mode. Yeah. I for have to dig into that more. <laughs> I had to learn more about how to how to take advantage of org mode for debugging. So you mentioned um, so when you when you tangle it'll it'll tell you which block yeah. is uh, yeah, it's something like org uh, babel tangle yeah. file or just tangle I don't remember yeah cool I only did it once but it solved my problem in ten minutes <laughs> excellent okay so <laughs> two you, hours yeah. yeah so you've got internationalization font size. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I did this. Uh, I said uh, I did this just for this here in ten minutes <laughs> after our initial talk. So yeah, this is nothing. It's, uh, you can do it so fast and uh, so nice. Um, let's go on. Um, maximize toggle frame. That also did very recently. Um, uh, that's nice. Forward sentence. Yeah, uh, I need it. 
a lot for normal code. Timestamp is nice too uh, for making notes when you when you have an idea. So you got a timestamp there. Okay, so you uh, so this is for taking notes in things that are not org files. I'm guessing. No, no, this is to insert the timestamp when you want to insert it, okay. or to update the timestamp. Not just to insert it automatically. You can make a hook and it inserts the timestamp when you create a new org uh, heading. But this is just to create one. So if I update it now, there it is, 1735. Huh. So I can update the timestamp just for taking notes for knowing when you have your idea. OK. So you don't use org capture? I, I have my own capture now. I used it for more than a year, okay. a year and a half. And I had this uh, in, you know, enormous capture template, complicated <laughs> several files. and um, <laughs> it got, out of hand, and <laughs> I stopped using it. And now I have my I've written my own uh, capture, yeah. okay. which is uh, which is here. We can use Swoop to find it. Um, here it is. I see. And it's a quick hack. It's uh, <laughs> really not, not well done, but it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> But it works perfectly because it's it's a one-stop thing yeah. here. Yeah, that works. It. Um, um, and tags. Um, and here we are. And it's in my log. And I'm with that. You know, with that tradition that you know also from John Wigley and the others of using a single file. Yeah, yeah. After having made so many other files, I used the, the many file approach for a while and got lost. <laughs> and you don't know whether this belongs to notes or to personal or to further or to do's or whatever. Yeah. Just use one long file and write everything. And then yeah. you can, like you suggested also recently in the Emacs list, I saw it just before logging in here. Um, you can use another method to archive your notes somewhere else where they belong. Yeah, or agree so file. Yeah, you have a central, something like a spine cord yeah. that runs through all notes, and then you use the, uh, the distributed things for archiving and for organizing information, but without ever losing the main cord. That's uh, true, and it makes it faster too. Get yeah, out there. much faster. Yeah, much faster. You don't have to think. You have an idea, and you know, okay, where well, should I write it? Where should I write it under? Is it under home, or is it under information, or internet, or where should it go? You know, and then you already lost it. <laughs> it doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that work. Yeah. So, cool. Yeah. So where were we? <laughs> We're going to file. Uh, oh, yeah. so, uh, we can see how it's organized, actually. Um, like this, so it's generic. Yeah. Which generic is packages. Is. We can go to generic packages. Um, LGET, uh, bring a list out of date. Dash is very beautiful. Magnus Slings Dash, you know. You know? Yeah, yeah. He, sh he, sh he talked about it. Early, um, in yeah, in 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 the chat with Magnus he he yeah. he meant, I think he mentioned Dash, but uh, I actually haven't dug into it myself. So what are what are some of the things you're taking advantage of in it? Dash I used for org meta org uh, published meta, which is that other oh, yeah? library that uh, is waiting to be alive. You know, at some point I'm gonna really start blogging with Jekyll. Mm -hmm. At that point, better be soon, something like next week. <laughs> <laughs> After having done it several times, scrapped all the you know tens of tens of little Jekyll tries and all scrapped them away, it's time to really and then I'm going to use this uh, or publish meta for that. Yeah. So you go to any file and publish to any other file that you want, any group of files. Yeah. And I, I mentioned it because yeah. someone on the I actually mentioned the org publish meta and the org mailing list because someone is wondering how to publish different headings to different files. Yeah. I'm hoping yeah. that's what it's it for. Really, 
really something one needs. And it, it works, but I haven't really uh, crash tested it or tested it in, in the field, out in the field yet. Mm -hmm. But um, it's not something I'm pressing a lot, so I, I can't, it's not a project that I have any you know, external public commitment to. Yeah. But I guess um, it's going to happen soon for me, and then we'll see how it really works. And it's going to be ironed more. Because you probably know these things uh, take some while to uh, mature, unless you're a genius. <laughs> there are geniuses out there. Um, no, I know. You know, the personal program super collider, this kind of person to, to speak clearly. <laughs> I mean, started off James James McCartney started off programming uh, his early tools in Max, and he'd been doing other stuff uh, around in music, and it was always of a high standard. He has this touch, a certain touch, you know. But uh, that's I think more of the ex the exception. Yeah. Yeah. So, you've so got this is something I wanted to show you, actually. Oh, yeah. um, uh, do you know uh, about switching windows? Um, uh, I, I know I should be using WinMove or things like that. I always just end up yeah, using Control X O. Really good. Uh, it's really good. What is uh, it then? Um, I'm, 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 I'm on both windows now, so we don't see a difference. Uh, yeah. I, so I go to another one, like this one. Yeah. And now I can switch the position of the window, oh. <laughs> move between the windows, and I can go to another one, uh, like maybe this one, or, or no, maybe um, open it, so I can move with cursors. Yeah. It's changed something I use all the time. You see, oh, I can navigate any way that I want, yeah. and I can ch change the position. Um, I need to take another one to show you the position. Um, maybe like this, and I can um, switch. That's handy. Yeah, very handy. And I can switch between the history of buffers, or switch between windows, or switch the position of the windows. It's something again I use, you know, every five minutes or every minute I, I have to do this, and it's extremely convenient. Which package is that? Switch window? Uh, switch window, yeah, here it is. Okay. okay. And it, it's actually a, a, a combination. It's two headings here. There's one switch window. I no, see. This is, actually, I don't use this. Um, <laughs> uh, this is we're going to see. Uh, so if I go XO, oops, excuse me. Uh, Other chippy, but I don't use it. Uh, control okay. X. Oh, there we are. Three. I don't need it. Yeah, I don't need this. Because wind move instead. I don't. Yeah, it's too slow. All I have to do is um, use my cursor keys. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, let's go there. And here it is. So I don't use this. I could just go like. The, <laughs> it's, you know. And this is what I use. Wind move and buff move. Beautiful packages. Really, really, really neat stuff. And here I use the whole Japan like uh, icicles, I menu, autocomplete, IDO, and not guide key. Guide key breaks a super collider post window. I know. So I don't. I, and you need to be uh, to get your feedback from SuperGlide immediately. So I disable it. Yeah. But I do all of that, and I actually use all those different modes, like you saw. Yeah. And it's not too much after all. So I'm, I'm the same. Yeah. In projectile too. Perfect. Projectile is wonderful. So you get into the habit of uh, creating a Git uh, directory for every piece of work that you do. Mm -hmm. You got double benefits. You, you you get you got your Git, and you've already got another project, and uh, you can switch between projects like oh. uh, like this. Uh, we are in Miami, and I can go to Tiny, and there I am, and I can open a directory, like, and here I am, and I can switch back, of course. Um, yeah, it's what, it's been on my to try list. Um, I think Magnar talked about uh, a pro projectile 
uh, it looks really really convenient for finding. Yeah, it's you don't need um, the speed bar at all. Yeah. Cool. No speed bar and uh, with projectile and uh, helm, uh, you're totally covered and a bit of idle. <laughs> I noticed you use Ido and Helm and uh, and icicles. So. Yes. <laughs> uh, I don't use icicles a lot because it's a bit slow and you need to go into regex to actually search better and uh, so it's not that good. So, for example, let's try it. Choose uh, yeah for for Lisp it's good. Yeah. So I've got all the variables there. I see. Yeah, but I, I hardly use it. It doesn't work on Super Collider, which is where I spend most of my time now. And um, it would be useful if it did. So I could, so I could uh, choose between classes and methods and things. But you can do that also with Super Collider itself. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. use I do for commands. I saw SMX in there, um, uh, and you have Helm for swoop. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's happening here. Oh, because we are in, uh, we are not uh, opened in any else, so um, we need any. Oh, yeah, we are. Now we're back. Yeah. Yeah. Bicycle key bindings, La Carte also, which I hardly use anymore. It's made it very good, I think. It's, yeah. made, it's made it nicer. Multiple cursors, I absolutely love. I use it every half hour. Really? When coding. Yes, all the time. All the time. That's awesome. Yeah. You have yet to get the hang of It's one of those, you know, it's one of those, yeah. I, I figure I'll, I'll get I'll get my I'll get the hang of smart parents and then I'll get I'll try to get the hang of multiple cursors or I edit or oh. Mm -hmm. At least other modes that require thinking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Key chords. Is that the, the special um, the the type of characters thing? Yeah, it's, it's oh no, it's okay. What's it called? Um, the famous uh, something jump, ace jump. Yeah, yeah. Something like uh, white space. Uh, again. So I can go to this white space, but I don't mm -hmm. use it. Oh. Really don't use it. <laughs> <laughs> we don't use key chords a lot. Uh, I use for a while, like for this case, in this case, like this in org mode to make this code. You see? Oh. That's nice. Yeah, yeah, I see that. Huh. That's how I write my documentation. This, this, this does save me some time. Okay. I see. So it, it, um, it gives you additional keyboard shortcuts. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And uh, that I do use for highlighting my code in Super Collider. Um, here you see there's a slight. slight oh, yeah. yeah, there are different colors. Yeah. That's really helpful. Yes, I love it. Yeah. I am still training as well in the Emacs list mode. Sorry? Yeah? I, I had no idea it existed. So this is good. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh. You're welcome. And uh, yeah, it works very well both with e, with Emacs Lisp and Super Collider. And then uh, there's, of course, there's um, Paredit for Emacs, beautiful for, for Lisp. I mean, for Super Collider, it doesn't really work consistently, but Super Collider has something that's like a paredic light, and I don't know where it is or who did it, but it works beautifully. Um, and yeah, and the rest is um, not so interesting, maybe. Um, <laughs> and there we are, Super Collider, Emacs Lisp, org mode, making it work with um, making it work with uh, uh, icicles, although I don't yeah. use them so much anymore. But org babel, org mode latex, uh, org reveal, org impress, these are <laughs> very, yeah, main, very important tools, I think. Oh. Very important tools, yeah. 
So you, you do a lot of presentations with Emacs. Yeah, I'm trying to. I haven't actually used them, I must say. But it's something I'm looking forward to, and I've practiced them. I'm not so, yet fluent with them, not even with LaTeX. You know, it takes all the time. I've configured it and uh, used it for a while, then dropped it. And uh, at some point, I think I'm, I'm going to really switch. One thing that I really use a lot is uh, tables. Uh-huh. Tables. So uh, or spreadsheets, spreadsheets or just the, just the table function? I use them for everything, for my project management, for complicated uh, project budget resolution, and uh, for quick calculations, for displays, for... <laughs> I even use them for fun, for, for maths. Uh, 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 demonstrating the the long integers of Emacs and going to <laughs> using towers of threes like with the famous Graham's number. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any examples you can show? <laughs> um, somewhere. <laughs> uh, or do you was for fun and profit? I had it. I, I may have it on. on um, let me have a look. I may have it online. Still, I may have it online. Um, That's another thing I need. I want to get into more too, because the, the org table functionality is really deep, and you can do all sorts of things with it. You just have to get the hang of the the formulas. Yeah. No, I can't find them straight off. That's cool. That's all right. And uh, power, and also the Fermat numbers. I did the Fermat numbers and the powers of towers of three or of towers of four, and then <laughs> rendered them in org mode from the table, and put them on on screen online, and you would have to scroll horizontally for the number, you know, for, eight, <laughs> for like five minutes. <laughs> and that's something really uh, quaint or you know not serious, but it's something that you can't do otherwise. Not unless you've got all more than Emacs. You see, it's quite unique, actually. It's more unique than it sounds. Yeah. yeah. And to do that was 10 minutes, you know, 15 minutes at most. Then you just type Control c Control e and uh, HO, and you've got, uh, you've got an HTML file, and uh, then you use uh, um, Tramp, and uh, chuck it on your site, and that's it. Yeah. 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 So I'm a big fan of tables, but org reveal I haven't actually used in real life, and org more like that, not yet really. <laughs> I think it's gonna come this year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's fantastic that you know since you since you've been working with Emacs for so long and 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 still there's you know there's stuff that you're figuring out you're, there's there's things that you're, you you think oh you know maybe this year I'll finally learn how to do this <laughs> <laughs> there are yeah. parts of your Emacs configuration that you're like oh, I actually don't use this anymore I I do that too I I have things there that I've forgotten about so how do you how do you keep learning like oh okay yes clear obvious question you, you know how do you keep learning more um but yeah, where do you where do you go for ideas? Where do you go to? Uh, what yeah. resources do you find helpful? What do I find helpful? What? Yes, in terms of learning more about Emacs. Uh, well, Emacs, Emacs Foo and uh, Org Mode, I think, is a very good place actually. Really, it's quite central. And uh, I'm looking around, looking at how the community develops, and I think it's uh, it's out there. I yeah. find it when I'm browsing to find things. I found it all over the place. I find it all over the place, and I think it's still got future. It is. So it's very exciting. I think that's what's um, what's changing a little bit in the uh, in the landscape, in the user landscape. Yeah, there's, there's so many excitement. There is John Kitchen, of course, you probably know from Carnegie Mellon with his chemistry stuff. And No, I don't. <laughs> More yeah. people I should talk to. <laughs> yeah, uh, he's an associate professor in Carnegie Mellon for chemistry and material science, if I'm right. And he presented uh, about literate programming in, what 
was a Python conference, something like that, because it doesn't go with Python and explained. It's online, you can find it. Awesome. I will go check Don, it out. John Kitchen. Right. Kitchen. I, I, the two eyes. I, Kitchen. John Kitchen. Uh, very impressive. He's, he's got uh, data uh, animation going on inside org mode, live. <laughs> Literally. Really? From oh. our Python, yeah. Wow. Incredible. Really incredible stuff. And he uses it with the, the whole team. And there's all the other people that wrote about literate programming that are yeah. using. And uh, so many other people are jumping over. It's either, it's almost like a divide between Markdown and Org Mode, but I think it's Org Mode has a uh, very good foothold there. Yeah. And, uh, and um, yeah, that, maybe that's, it's the one that got me back in Emacs, but I believe that's the one that is now pulling Emacs. Org Mode is uh, playing a major role in making Emacs widely used. Yeah. Well, aside from that, I know, you know Emacs Foo, or there's not necessarily it's not Emacs Rocks, but it's the, the other one, which, which he called um, his other blog on Emacs. And but I don't go there a lot. Yeah. You're too busy customizing Emacs. <laughs> so? you're, you're too busy tweaking Emacs to uh, go read a lot of things, probably, or playing with a super collider. Yeah. I guess when you're doing that, you learn a lot. I do everything. I do everything with Emacs, of course, uh, except reading email, which I haven't gotten around to. But you know, web design, uh, everything, uh, all my organization is around, of course. That's yeah, because once you've you've got the tools, you can customize it as much as you have. I mean, you're writing your own interfaces for for uh, for Super Collider and other things like that. It's it's really hard to use any. So, yeah. yeah. So I guess that's your you know, maybe I, yes. tips for I other people. Is this going to is this uh, uh, type of user going to get more, or is it going to stay a minority? I that's a question that's in the back of my mind. Is well, it going I, to be more of a mainstream way of working, or is it just uh, geek, so to speak? As a certain type of person that can hmm. really work with this. I don't know. Well, you mentioned in the, you know, when I, when I asked in the beginning if you'd gotten any of your students uh, playing around with Emacs. And, like, Some of them, very slowly, but, you know. <laughs> and even colleagues, you know. Yeah. Sometimes they say, or younger colleagues say, oh, come on. That's the only thing I don't want to hear about. <laughs> <laughs> I guess all we can do is, you know, keep experimenting and keep customizing and keep being smug about what we can do with Emacs. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. eventually people will be like, okay, fine, tell me yeah. how you can start it. Yeah, I don't think I, I, I don't feel like I need to, too much to, um, you know, to um, convince anybody. I'm pretty convinced myself, but being so convinced, I just wonder what this frame of mind is for the more broader part of the computer user community. Whether this is going to stay like a small but convinced group or whether this type of thinking is slowly going to erode and go to other places too. That's my sort of theoretical question about the future of Emacs. I'm happy to, to see that, especially with org mode, right? It's It's been expanding beyond the usual base of computer geeks or whatever. So you have, have yeah. writers and, and musicians and uh, scientists yeah. getting into it just because of org. Yeah. The person who did WordPress was a young guy, I forget his name now, um, with a W anyway. Matt Millenweg, yeah? No, no, no. Uh, no? no? A German type name. He's a big Emacs user. He's the inventor, the co-inventor of WordPress, not mm -hmm. a small person. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, yeah so, so, you know, it, it might be a minority now, but it, it, it does look like a lot of people are, are coming on, and it's, it's always a fascinating community because people are coming up with all sorts of hacks, uh, you know, music mm -hmm. or, or uh, tables or, or uh, all sorts yeah. of other things that people are doing. So this is great. Thank you so much for... for Showing people yeah. the, the possibility of what you can do when you customize Emacs a bit more. It's, 
I, I like the idea of literate music, and it's great to see how you can use it even for a performance, right? You can jump back and forth. You can organize things to make yeah. it easier for you. Like Aaron, like you mentioned also, yeah. Aaron, um, Octane, um, yeah. uh, Overtone, yeah. using Clojure, yeah. yeah, and many other people too, and people in chat too. Yeah, yeah. So that's all exciting. And I'm looking forward to uh, reaching out to the other people that you mentioned, maybe for these Emacs chats where we get to yeah. pick up yeah, how other people use it. Yeah. <laughs> all right, then. Thank you so okay. much. And have a great day. I'm going to end the broadcast now. Uh, and um, yes. everyone else, thank okay. you for listening. Catch you next time. Bye.